Warren, all my life I've been thinking about this question, how do we get the mind from what's in our cranium, our brain? And I oscillate between the two extreme positions. On the one hand is some kind of a non-physical something, and on the other hand is pure physicalism. Mm -hmm. You've told me that I should think about something else, mm -hmm. something sort of in the middle called non-reductive physicalism. Mm -hmm. So tell me what that's about. Non-reductive physicalism is a term which, which refers to the fact or refers to the commitment that persons are physical beings, so we, that's physicalism, and that the properties of personhood, including mind and consciousness, are physical properties. Totally physical. Totally physical. The, the term non-reductive means that those very high-level properties that we would identify, for example, as most uniquely human, cannot be reduced to the stubs, substrates out of which they emerge. So we have a very complex physical system, and out of those physical systems emerge properties that are organizations of the physical system, but those properties are causal in the world. So when I think, my thinking is an emergent property of all kinds of things going on at all sorts of different levels in the cells of my nervous system, but that thinking is an organizational thing that is causal in the world. So it, it as thinking is, is involves and the neural activity is necessary, but it can't be reduced to them. So, uh, and that involves another term called top-down causation. So as soon as there are patterns involved that involve thinking about something or reacting to something or being socially involved in something that creates patterns of activity in my nervous system, it's those patterns that are creating my interaction with the world, but those patterns have constraints on what any particular neuron at any position in the networks that are being active uh, does. So its future, its current state and future is restricted and constrained by the overall pattern. And when people talk about this, they talk about once systems organize into patterns like that, the whole system has greater degrees of freedom due to the fact that the elements are being constrained in patterns. So you have essentially top-down influence by the constraint. This, the elements are still operating in their sort of determinist physio physiological way, but they're, but they're trapped in a network. And that that network is a particular kind of a network because that's the network that works best in the world. And therefore, that network is the cause now of what I am doing as a person. So that, that idea allows you to think about or to capture the idea of very high level things about me that I might be doing that are not reducible to just cells. So uh, my experience of empathy can't be reduced to a particular cell or even network of cells. It's a part of me as a whole burnt bit being and it's a pattern of activity that involves interestingly enough, not just my brain, but my body. So I'm getting feedback from my body and I'm processing that my brain. That whole pattern of thing is a pattern that we might call empathy. And that causes me, causes me to interact in some way in the world that I wouldn't interact as a whole person if that pattern weren't in place, even though some particular neurons may be doing the same thing now as they were doing without the empathy. Okay, let's just understand yeah. two of these primary yeah. terms. Uh, emergence, that yeah. you have to have some sort of emergence, something at a higher level that laws or yeah. principles that don't exist at a lower right. level that you couldn't yeah. even predict, I guess, at, at this level. The second is is non-reductive. So are they two different? So non-reductive sort of looks on top saying, I can't go down with the, ex yeah. and, and the emergence comes from the bottom up. It, it, just understand those two terms, how, yeah, they, how they work together. Yeah, they're just pointing to the same thing from a different point of view. Yeah. So emergence yeah. says, how does the bottom things get to the top? Okay. And non-reductive say, once you're making a description you at can't the go top, down. Yeah. you can't use, you go to the bottom level and say, and get, a, get an exhaustive account yes. of how this, you can give some account. Right. I mean, our whole neurobiology is given accounts 
for very high level things, but they're not sure. exhaustive accounts. Sure. And, and, and they're not, and they don't uh, totally capture the causal structure that's going on in the entire pattern of the entire person as a person is momentarily engaged in the world as a pattern cause. Okay, just for clarity, yeah. there is nothing in the top-down pattern that is not resonant in terms of the the physics, the, the core physics of the individual neurons yeah. and going down below to the molecules. Yeah. There's nothing there. What, You're what not is, adding anything there. What is happening is because of the need to interact with the world in a particular way, a particular very high-level way, the, the neurons or parts of neurons or whatever have to organize and they self-organize in a way that constrains the activity of any particular cell or element wherever you want to look. It's constrained in the sense that it's still physical laws are operating, but they're operating in a contextual constraint that is formed by a larger pattern. And it's really that larger pattern that creates the, the, the interaction with the world that causes me as a person okay. to act in one way or another. The term non-reductive in this context, is that something non-reductive because it is so difficult to understand, like complexity theory or chaos theory, it, it, it's just so far beyond any conception that we'll never understand it? Or is it something that is in principle forever and ever for billions of years of research, you will never be able to describe it in purely physical terms? Fundamental difference. Uh, you will never be able to describe it because, first of all, you can't freeze a dynamic system. It is constantly, dynamically interactive with the world in a, in a way that, these, that the pattern of organization continually interactive. I accept that. And, and so... But if I were to know everything possible about the underlying physics, including the probability structures you and wave have, function yeah, of quantum yeah, mechanics. Yeah, if, I had, yeah. if I knew everything there was to know, could I predict what's happening at the top no, level? No, you would have to know something about things happening at the top level to know how they're gonna organize, why they organize, what was it about the environment that caused them to organize that way. And then once they organize, then, then there is a relationship it's the it's those lower level things that are being organized by the necessity of interacting with the environment in this way. So that the the theoretical area that describes as well is dynamical systems theory, and that dynamical systems theory has been used to describe ant colonies and cities and all kinds of different complex things out of which emerge properties of the whole, properties of the whole colony properties of the whole city, properties of the whole person, properties of the whole... But, ma but many of those things like weather predicting are impossible, quote unquote, in any sort of, of computational analysis, but they are not in principle impossible. They're impossible because of the structure of the world and complexity theory and chaos theory. But in principle, they are discoverable if if they, indeed you can know are everything. They are discoverable, but to discover them, you would have to take into account things happening at the higher level, taking into account the higher level as the higher level. So you can't, they're non-reductive in that sense. Even though they're, all of that is necessity, you can't give an exhaustive account of what a person is doing as a person without taking into account the person as a person and their interaction with the world, or that person's brain as a brain as it interacts with its body and with the world at times. So you can't exhaustively explain it because you would have to move up to the level of what is the person, where is the person, what is the person's doing, what is their interaction with the world, what is their history. That's the other thing about dynamical systems. They operate out of a history. So you have to know the history. History. And, and the history may be sort of embodied in memory systems in some way, but they, they are that way because of things that you have to deal with at a higher level to understand why these, that memory got built in that way that may be a physical memory, and then what is its role when it comes back into consciousness to be used to do the next bit of behavior. 
So I really, I mean, this is, is um, you know, a, a theoretical back and forth that nobody's going to solve. But my commitments are, are on the side of non-reductive physicalism and emergent properties that you will not be able to explain, even I think in principle, uh, without moving to the higher level and using that level of understanding and, and, and recognition of the whole system as it interacts with the system in the world and as it self-organizes it around its necessity historically to deal with the world. So you got to understand where the organization comes from to know how the physics and neuro science is going to, or neurophysiology is going to work and how that organizational pattern came into to account to being has to do with that whole organism or person or city or <laughs> ant colony as it interacts with the world.